love to express ourselves. All right? And uh, we want to thank Mary Guerrero and El Tayer in particular, right? Without them. of Lawrence right now. El Tayer is sort of the spot for Guerrilla Society. This is where we do most of our stuff. And so it's really great to be on our home base and performing with you tonight. And of course we want to thank Joan, the amazing Joan, who I'm just learning to love myself. And, um, what's that? There's nothing to learn. There's nothing to learn, just love her, okay. She, uh, she connected with Mary Guerrero, said if you want to do something different for your cultural inclusion thing, get the girl of society. So we're so glad to be here. And she told us about your cultural inclusion program, the fundraiser for tonight, and asked us to present spoken word pieces on the matter of inclusion and exclusion. And so these young people have come today to present from their hearts. Uh, someone who spoke earlier said, you know, they just speaking authentically from their experience about what it means to be included and excluded in this society. And, the, and you're, gonna, you're not going to hear anything about checking a box or anything like that, okay? <laughs> so I really thank you uh, for coming and for opening your hearts and ears to, to listen to what uh, we have to offer tonight. I'm going to introduce uh, each of our performers uh, before they perform. Uh, almost our whole group is here tonight, but only a few people could perform just based on the time limitations. And also just want to know, is it, who's been to a spoken word poetry performance before? So y'all know that this is what we do. Snap, snap, snap. So you can clap if you want. If you want to say, hey, yeah, cool, say what, whatever it is that you say. Um, yeah, feel free. But you also see people who know, you can snap. When you resonate with something, when you're just like, yeah, I, I think that. Like, snap, snap it out. Everybody want to snap it out? Yeah. So, Feel free, right, to express yourself. So more poetry is an interactive affair. So our first performer is Angel Flores. Angel is a graduate of Lawrence High School. Uh, he studies also at NECO here in Lawrence. He's probably our most prolific writer and performer on our spoken word uh, poetry team. I mean, that's my opinion. Um, he's a very deep thinker. He's a believer. And uh, his piece tonight is called Encaged Liberty. We also clap on the That's better. Opportunities, riches to caress, that's what they said was the US of A. Caught in intense suspense, I commenced to dispense my deep desires and thoughts that my children would have better tomorrows here. But all I have is sorrows here. Distressed by stress, I attempt to suppress tears that can no longer fall me to hear. Are you hearing me? Well, I need you to hear. I need you to hear. I need you to listen. This is the US of A. I never get paid like all the rest. 20 plus years, that should be neck deep in treasure chests, investors, and whores intertwined with political offices, harvest and disaster, destroying the history, economy, and a hell of a lot more than just the life. Every day is the daily strife, and the feeling I drew from knife through my common sense. Screw the damn white pick fence. I honestly thought the grass was greener. Stupid demeanor, they think we can scare ya. My baby, I'm gonna need a tailor for all the new rule holes this free country shot in my dreams. Guess there wasn't enough shooting down innocent Iraqis. Guess there wasn't enough to discriminate me for not understanding the language you taught me poorly, purposely. I need to breathe. My children seek to live in this land of the free. I, the child, reside in an underprivileged community, Lawrence, a place of a few places in this nation that still fights for justice and equality. Maybe some days my sisters and I will soar high like my mother's shot dreams. Maybe like an eagle. Maybe like a jet. 
Maybe one day in our future's eyes and time we will be drowned in the debt for confiscated land by a lying government claiming they're the greatest in this world. Enough of the damn abuse. The silence passed through on breaking free of this world of detriment. Words interlocked by rhythmic patterns or melting the chains of my mentality. I was born in this, the immigrant city, but I will defend it for its great, despite the commentary. True liberty in this land might never be transpired. But what some didn't realize, however, is that through poetry, my liberty has already been acquired. Clinbert Garcia, also known as Clinny. He, like Angel, has his roots in the DR in New York City. Um, he is uh, really our idea man in the group, uh, our existentialist, always bringing the unique perspective. And the uh, piece that he is performing tonight has no title. Would you please welcome Clinny? Let the energy of your circle bring forth the joy of sharing, kind words and honest opinions, for being a part of the cool kids never sustains truthful relationships, but awaken our inner demons of greed, lust, and pleasure of materialistic needs. Demons all based upon social status and symbols, like is your parent a doctor or a zookeeper? What are we? Where do we belong? So we get a thumbs up for being ourselves and even when the clouds are dark, but are you willing to? To uncover the light that shines in our hearts, here I come to raise my hands and split them apart. Sharply I take the beat of those around me. In synchronization, I rhythm filled that hole the demons did. I got dirt inside my nails, but no longer getting hammered down with the nail. For we got the scepter that our love has manifested. Grip tight, it's magnificent. at NECO. She works full-time for the city of Lawrence. She is one of the co-founders of the group along with Tim McGee who unfortunately couldn't be with us tonight. Uh, she's also sort of like the sunshine heart of our group. Uh, without girls, without Kayla there's really no guerrilla society. She's not only a poet, she's a painter and an all-around artist. And uh, her, the title of her piece is, Is It a Crime to Be a Latino? Isla del Caribe, Isla del Caribe. I played my that means I could gain my chest where I rest. No stress, we don't smoke sex. Less, I must confess, my destiny's manifested. So I've done my key to the side of his pretty little suit of a Puerto Rican American. Yes, I was born and raised in the States. You see, my parents moved to the U.S. of A to strive for a better life so that their children could grow on the land of the free roots fixated to the ground so deep beneath no way our branches could fall. They embraced the harshest wind so that we could feel the sun again. <laughs> they embraced the harshest wind so that we could feel the sun again. My mother lived in the projects, three brothers and a father who never gave a damn, a stepfather who abused, and a mother who didn't know right from wrong. No money for clothes, so they would search in the dumpsters, thrift and free store, shop for food in the pantries, never graduated high school, but later went on to get her GED. Mama always wanted a better, making her work permit to 
at the age of 12 so that she could work and pay the bills and money for herself. Language is never a barrier, a bilingual speaker who could break the most elegant stories you have ever read. My father, born and raised on a farm, four brothers, two sisters, a horse, and a father who was only around to show him that being lazy was not an option. Never finished high school, the farm was more important. Learned the essences of what would keep him surviving, then headed to the States at 17. Not a word of English he spoke, but his hands were his mouth. An artist so articulate with his fingertips perfecting his craft, one of the best mechanics I know. Not only can he dance and prance around delicately, oh sorry, <laughs> not only can he dance and prance so delicately around V8 inches, but he said, let there be light. His intellectual ability is of a genius. Had they finished school, all four brothers would have been engineers. My father chose to build a family and a home and said, build the foundation of our structures. My mother helped us form. I and my parents. We can only ameliorate ourselves before we can change our surroundings. I am my parents. I am an American, but I am 100% Puerto Rican too. Used to sing the national anthem, it's what we learned in school. But blasted Hector Lavoe on Saturday mornings while we cooked and cleaned at home. I am from red, white, and blue flags, literally. I can be eloquent when I speak in what you call English native, but back home on the island, native is Spanish too. I am from beautiful winter wonderlands and palm trees in your backyard, from orchestras and Hanzo and Haydn to ten string guitars, tamboras, guidas, from mecoritos on the streets. I am from, excuse me sir, to pardon me, to ole loco, to permiso por favor. I don't apologize for speaking a little ethnic, sounding a little urban or having an accent. I don't apologize for passing as an American or a Latina or Italian. But does being an American, but what does an American mean when being born and raised here is overlooked by my roots? Does it make me less American? I am my parents. Thank you. Did I mention she can sing too? <laughs> So our next performer is Celeste Cruz. Also resident here in Lawrence, all of our performers. All of our performers tonight anyway were uh, Lawrence residents. She is a student at PMA, presentation of Mary Academy, soon to transfer to Lawrence High School. She is also a multifaceted artist, writer, drawer, and uh, I like to, I sometimes refer to her as Celestial because that is what she is. And uh, she also hails from the DR. And you will see she was actually requested. This is a command performance because there are people in this room who heard her perform this poem, who said we want to hear that again. And so you're all in for a treat. Hear about her roots in the DR. This is Celeste Cruz's famous poem. Sing on CO2. Moncillo tree. She was able to grow up and live with it. My mother was able to watch it grow as well, and so have I. That Limoncillo tree has been up for 53 years. This summer, I will go to my great-grandmother's house, pluck out her Limoncillo tree, take the roots and plant them into me. I will pluck off every single green ball, remove the skin, make that pale orange into a dull white. I will suck its juices dry, take the juices, let them go down to my womb, pass them down to my children, so that they can carry it within them, so that my great-great-great-grandchildren may have pieces of their roots within them, that they never forget their past, never forget a part of them still lives in the campo, not just in Santiago, not just in America, not just wherever their feet may take them, but in Hina Magal, where that limoncillo tree was once planted. To my descendancy, wherever your feet may take you, never forget you are a mix of Spaniard, Taino, and African, and no matter how many times you 
mix, you still carry your steeper than my abuela's limoncillo tree. A couple days ago, I spoke to my abuela. I was telling her how excited I am to see her in August. Our conversation was about to end, and I asked her about the tree. She told me I probably would not see it. She told me it had been cut down by a group of bandits. The limoncillo tree is now dead, but its roots still live, and so do I. I do not let any of the mishaps and difficulties get the best of me. I will continue to fight for myself in the so-called land of the free. I will not let anything cut off my connection with my roots because I am the descendancy. My ancestors look down at me and I, as the descendancy, look up at them. We are both smiling. I will never forget who I am. And I will never forget the struggles of my ancestors. And never will they shut the door down on the descendants. At age 16, I'm striving for the future as I represent the, the past. I am welcoming like a Taino, powerful like a Spaniard, and strong like an African. I carry roots much deeper than my abuela's limoncillo tree. Thank you. Wow, right? Glad you came. Yes. Glad you came. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna actually say a few more things, but while I'm talking, have everybody who's in the Gorilla Society come up, okay? So you can see the whole group. So uh, there's actually nine of us in the group right now. There's eight of us who are um, here tonight. If you'd like to hear us again very soon. Um, all nine of us will be performing, presenting at this event. There's uh, some flyers around and there's uh, uh, posters that are in the window, maybe you saw on Tuesday. Uh, El Tayer is hosting the Spoken Word Lecture Series and we're the second of three uh, guest performers. So we do some performances and we comment on what it's like to be spoken word poets and all of us will be performing there. So I hope if you want to hear us again, all new material, Right, so um, I'm in different material than uh, what you heard tonight. So welcome you to that, and grab one of these flyers that hopefully will be on the table tables um, while you leave, uh, when you leave. And what else? So what we're going to do a lot of time, most of the time, we try and remember to do this whenever we meet. Uh, we meet on a weekly basis. Again, we're all volunteer, no staff. We're not a nonprofit. We don't. <laughs> there's nothing going on like that. Just see all of these uh, folks show up. We, we write together, we rehearse together, we, we just do our best to try and, uh, you know, sort of discover ourselves through our creative self-expression. And we're really thankful that you would come and listen to us and share that with us. What we do at the end of every time, or most every time we try, sometimes we forget, um, is positive affirmations. And so we want to share with you, we want you to join with us in some affirmations. And Kayla Rodriguez, who's the, the heart of our group, as I said, is all, usually the one, are always the ones to lead us in those affirmations. Yeah. And so but we're, so Kayla's going to explain sort of like how it goes and that each one of us is going to offer an affirmation that we want you to repeat after us. Okay? So Kayla, would you come up? Okay. Oh, this is attached, just kidding. Um, okay, so we are doing positive affirmations. So basically this is just to, you know, keep um, your confidence alive. Um, sometimes we go through something life and we're just like, oh, you know, what's going on with us? But this is just to keep you grounded and rooted, um, not only for yourself, but for others. So I want you guys, I'm gonna start off and we're just gonna go down, everybody has a line. So I want you guys, if you want, you can close your eyes, this is really how we do it. If you're afraid that somebody's in front of you and you're gonna fall, you don't have to close your eyes. But basically you're gonna repeat after us and I want you guys to say it with confidence. You're gonna say it to yourself, you're saying it to yourself, so complete confidence, okay? No, no lacking, all right? I am courageous. I am courageous. I am kind. And I am celestial. And I am celestial. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I am a creator. I am a creator. I am innovative. I am innovative. I am a culture. 
I am alive. I am alive. I am free. I am free. No matter what, I will continue to grow and thrive. No matter what, I will continue to grow. Anybody on your side, anybody. And I want you to say, You belong. I belong. I belong. You're my neighbor. And this might sound weird, but just tell them you love them.